Hey guys, welcome back in to another edition of the Nolcast. This is a solo episode. Ingram is uh, unavailable today, so we're going to talk a little Louisiana Lafayette, Raging Cajuns, and to do that, I'm bringing in a guy I actually know through Twitter. I don't think we've ever met in, in real life, but uh, I guess that's, you know, since COVID, a lot of people meet on the yeah. internet. Uh, Jamarcus Fitzpatrick, well, welcome to the show, man. Hey man, thanks for having me on. No doubt. Uh, so it's K-A-T-C-T-V-3? Yes, that's correct. Wow. Okay, that that, yeah. is, that is a mouthful. And uh, you guys are uh, like the local station covering the Cajuns, right? Yeah, it's uh, two other stations here um, within the area. Um, we, we try to do our best to be the best um, at covering what the Cajuns are doing. So uh, really enjoying my time here in Lafayette, man. Absolutely. As always, a show brought to you by Louisiana Hot Sauce, Tarpon Cellars, the great folks at with Chad and Shannon, 844 FSU Loan and uh, Congruity HR Solutions, as well as Charlie Park. If you're up in Tallahassee this weekend, be sure to hit up Charlie Park. Are, are you are you making the trip? We are not. We are not. Okay. I actually uh, have a wedding that I'm in, so I'll probably be uh, looking at it from my phone as we're in between uh, the wedding and stuff. So that should be – well, actually, no, it's a, an 11 a.m. kick, so I might be able to look at it before we head uh, to the wedding. There you go. I, I, uh, I've, I've been uh... – I've been curious about this team. Uh, just ha- having watched them, you know, throughout the year. I, I obviously we we watched little or not little, excuse me, Louisiana a pretty good bit I, as as you know the Gators hired Billy Napier away. What what uh, what should FSU fans know about about the the new coach and, and kind of how things have changed uh, since Napier left? Definitely, uh, Michael Desimo is the head coach. He's been on the staff for a couple of years. He's sat under Coach Napier and had an opportunity to learn from him. Um, he's a local guy from here in the Acadiana area. He get, he graduated from Catholic of New Iberia, played college football at Louisiana back in the early 2000s. Um, and now he's here getting his shot to coach his alma mater. Um, and this has been no easy task for him because he's had a lot of guys to hit the transfer portal, guys like Kyron Lacey, Imani Bailey, uh, Montreal Johnson, who went to Florida with Billy Napier. Um, he's had, you know, a senior quarterback in Levi Lewis that was a three-year starter to graduate. Um, so many others that I'm not naming. Osiris Torrance hit the transfer portal and went to Florida. And so a lot of people behind the scenes or out in the area have always been saying, you know, this team isn't going to be the same or this team uh, just isn't going to be good. And, you know, me and my coworker have always said, like, they have been in a lot of these ball games that they have – been in a lot of these games that they've lost they're five and five on the season and honestly the two losses that i can really point to where they just flat out got beat was the southern miss game where they allowed them to score 20 points in the first quarter and then they were kind of battling back from there a late pick six kind of sealed the deal for southern miss to win and then rice because they scored 14 points rice did in the fourth quarter to eventually put them over the top and win the game all of these other games were one possession games. The ULM game, 21 to 16 was the final. Uh, Troy, they were up 17 to nothing, and Troy wins 23 to 17. South Alabama uh, wins at 20 to 17. The Cajuns didn't score their first offensive touchdown until 44 seconds were left in the fourth quarter. So this team has really been right there on the brink of potentially have been an eight and two program instead of a five and five program. But, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, um, this is who they are right now. I think that this team is still very good. Um, competing against Florida State, who has been on a very uh, hot streak as of late after losing to three straight uh, top 25 programs, um, it's going to be their big challenge yet. But uh, Coach Dez, when we talked to him yesterday, he said that we just have to play our best ball game. And uh, that, he, you know, he gave a lot of credit to Florida State, saying that their guys up front were a problem. Uh, one of the uh, newspaper writers asked, you know, what are they special at or particular area are they special at? And he kind of laughed and said they're special everywhere. Um, so it's a tall task that they have on Saturday, but um, they're not going to back down. For sure. I, you know, One thing that, that I was looking into is that their strength of schedule within the conference this year uh, does feel quite a bit more difficult than it's been in prior years. And I, I found this, this stat interesting. You know, Billy Napier didn't face a single team from the Sun Belt West that made a, made a bowl game. In the last two years, yeah. And now, I mean, you have other teams in that in that division, man, that are really stepped up their game. Right? Like this is the best Southern Miss team we've seen four or five years now. Definitely the best Troy team we've seen in a while. And South Al seems yeah. to have their stuff together. Like part of it's the players leaving, but part of it, like 
I don't like. Does Napier go undefeated against this Sun Belt or Sun Belt West slate? I feel like it's a lot tougher than it was last year. It really is, man. Uh, you've had a couple of guys transfer in. I mean, even uh, the quarterback at Georgia Southern, who the Cajuns just played on Thursday, uh, transferred in from Buffalo, and is like the top three guy in the passing yardage in the country. Oh, um, Ventrese, so yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a competitive league. It's always been competitive, but it's just getting more and more competitive. I believe we were talking uh, before Coach Dez came in to, to speak with the media, and I think we said that there were 10 teams in the Sun Belt that were eligible for bowls or could potentially play in bowls right now. It was something along those lines. So this league is extremely competitive. Um, to say that it would have been Billy's league to win right now, I can't really say that because, you know, he would have still lost Levi Lewis. Um, he would have had a couple of more pieces, but you still have to go out and, and put the ball down and play. Um, I think Dez has done the best that he could as a first-year head coach. Um, he is battling. Um, he had an early quarterback, I guess, battle earlier in the season where they were uh, playing with Chandler Fields and also playing with Ben Woolridge. And Chandler got hurt, and now Ben has taken over as the full-time starter. Um, so it's been a lot of uh, processes where he's been trying to make decisions as he's going along. Um, a lot of the offensive line hadn't really jailed because a lot of those guys didn't practice in the spring. Um, so it's been a lot of, of a difference. And then you add more competitive teams into the Sun Belt on top of that. So it's just it's been a strange year for the Cajun. All right. Tell me about Michael Jefferson. I look at my stat sheet here and I see Michael Jefferson has more targets than any other two dudes on the team put together. I feel like if, if the Cajuns are throwing the ball, it's it's going to Jefferson. No doubt about it. Um, they call him MJ. He is definitely a guy that will play on Sundays. Um, he has a great ability. Um, he can run all the routes. Uh, he can go over the top. He can run a slants and, and take off for 80 yard touchdown. Um, he's got great hands. I think he's about 6'3", 6'4", um, and he can run. You know, I think that when the Cajuns are clicking, throwing the football, he's the type of guy that can knock the top off of defenses, but he's also the guy that can go and get 10 catches for you uh, on a day, just depending on whoever you're playing. Um, the Cajuns historically have been a team that likes to run the football and let that set up the passing game, uh, but Michael Jefferson has been the leader of a very packed, wide receiver room you got guys also along the way john stevens uh jacob bernard so many others dante fleming who had a great game but michael jefferson has kind of been the the leader of that room as a whole for sure uh if like the the spread right now is is sitting at at, at 24 points and this, this isn't necessarily a betting show but uh if if louisiana is in this game still solidly by halftime or like if, if for some reason like let's let's say, and FSU is clicking pretty well right now, and, and Louisiana just is Louisiana is catching them in a bad time because they're like the healthiest they've been all year. So, you know, in that little October swoon, they had a bunch of guys out or or playing playing pretty dinged up, and the bye week seems to have been mighty kind of Florida State. If this game is is close in the third quarter, other than just kind of the token answer of well turnovers, right, which you know can kind of swing any game. Who has balled out? Like, like how, how does how do you write that story? How, how do you tell that story to to your viewers back home if they do keep this thing real close? Who who kind of killed it for them? That's a pretty good question. I think honestly, it would come down to obviously the defense getting big stops, but also I think that running back Chris Smith, who is a senior for the Cajuns, I think that he's been getting a lot of carries and a lot of breaking off some big runs here in some of these games later in the season. He actually was hurt for I believe two weeks. Uh, before uh, during the season, but now he is coming on really late, having a, a couple of good performances. I think he had about 90 yards rushing uh, in the Troy game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if you're feeding him late in the game and it's a, still a close competitive game, or if you even have a lead on Florida State, I think we'll be saying that Chris Smith showed up, and I think that the defense was able to get back there and put pressure on the quarterback. Awesome. Uh, defensively, you said obviously, you know, defense getting stops. The, the defense is rated by most of the power ratings as, as you know much better than the offense is, and, and I think part of that, as you noted, was they were kind of rotating quarterbacks earlier in the year. Offensive line hadn't jailed. They like they lost more transfers. I feel like that would affected chemistry on on the offense than they did the defense. But you still think the defense is a better unit than the offense here, right? Absolutely. Uh, the defense has really shined for this team, and they've kept them in a lot of ball games. Um, I can think back to the Rice game when they were in Houston. I was there. 
um, and Caleb Anderson gets a pick six. Um, Andre Jones gets an interception. The offense does, isn't able to do anything with it. Uh, Nigel McGreef, a defensive lineman, drops back in coverage, and he gets an interception. Like, these guys force turnovers. These guys get stops. Um, but sometimes, you know, when the offense is getting in certain situations where they're not able to capitalize and score points and they're having to give it back to the opposing team's offense, eventually your defense does wear down. Um, so, you know, they don't give up a lot of big plays. Uh, they try their best to limit as many explosive plays as they can and create as many turnovers as they can. Um, and they've done uh, well throughout the season um, and it's led to the five wins that they've had and it's kept them competitive in a couple of the games that they have lost. Who are some guys on, on, on the defense who we might be looking back, you know, a year or two from now or or, or three and say, like, that guy's in the NFL, like, hey, I, I covered him here at Louisiana or maybe, like, you know, he transfers to – like an Ohio State or something like that, like like a guy that's just he's clearly next level, uh, you know, from this defense. No doubt about it. Um, they actually have a guy, Eric Gear, who is a cornerback. Um, that he is a return specialist. Um, I think through his career, he has three uh punt returning touchdowns, which is tied for the school record, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he can just he can get active, man. Like if you kick it back there to him, a lot of teams have learned to just don't kick it in his direction, but he can go and and make it happen i mean he can go and get in the end zone he can flip the field all of those different things uh they also have an outside linebacker in andre jones um who has garnered a lot of attention uh about a six four six five 250 pound guy uh he can come off the edge he has dropped back in coverage a lot more this season and got that interception against rice earlier in the year but primarily he's a pass rusher uh zion hill green who is a defensive tackle and is actually tied to school record for career sacks um, and has the opportunity to break that school record either this week or the next week um, as another guy that really comes to mind. Um, they've got so many other guys that I'm not thinking about or being able to call out. But when I think about the defense, those are the primary guys that you're talking about as leaders on the front in the secondary. Braylon Trahan, also a safety who's been a part of the program for a very long time um, and as a leader back there on the back end. So those are some of the guys that really stand out on the Cajuns defense. Awesome. Um, obviously, like. Louisiana is one win away from playing for a bowl, which is, is a streak I'm sure they want to keep going. They have Texas State remaining the, the week after this. And uh, Texas State is a team that, uh, like, I don't know if you watched them last week against South Al, but they got a lot of guys out on offense right now. Like, I, don't, I don't really know how many points they're going to be able to score the, the rest of the way. Is there anybody on Louisiana who's, you know, battling injury that if you're, if you're Michael DeSormo, you kind of think, do we play him here? Do we save him to try to make a bowl? You know what I'm saying? Like, like is there any guys that are kind of 50-50 as far as coming back off that injury that they're going to have to make decisions on? They're about as healthy as they can be. You know, he mentioned um, in Monday's press conference as well that, you know, they have some guys that are nicked up. Uh, Zion Hill Green went out at one point in last week's game, um, but they are still as healthy as they can be. I don't think that he's going to hold anybody out. Um, he mentioned about having a, you know, a back against the wall mentality, and that's when the team plays at their absolute best. So I think that all of the guys that he has on the roster is going to be hungry to get on the field and try to get these guys that sixth win or even that seventh win have the opportunity uh, to compete and and have a, a bowl. Awesome. Um, you guys, by the way, I, I, if you guys are not watching us on the YouTube channel, uh, you guys can follow Jamarcus at J Fitz with a Z, J Fitz TV. Uh, right yep, there. there you go. You got it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just uh, we we have a pretty good pretty good podcast audience too. So I was like, I make, make sure to get the call out for the uh, you know, for the for the Twitter at. Is there anything else you you want to plug here? Uh, yeah. Follow us on Twitter, man. Uh, stay up to date with all things Cajuns. Uh, we also cover a little bit of LSU. Um, but if you're looking for anything raging Cajuns, be sure to follow myself, uh, my sports director Seth Lewis. I think his Twitter is at Seth Lewis Inc. And also Megan Glover. Uh, Megan G TV is her Twitter account as well. Um, this is a sports team that I love. I've known these people for a very long time in the business. Megan, I knew her growing up because we're from the same city. Um, so if you want to know all things about Raging Cages, man, be sure to give us a follow. No doubt about it. Jamarcus, man, really appreciate having you on. Thank you for having me, man.